And welcome to the 72 PC podcast, the only podcast where you can join the conversation and the game. What's up, fellas? Yeah. With us this week, we have Eric. What's up? And we have Tom. A hind D. A hind D. What's the Russian gunship you doing here? You're drinking that smoke again, aren't you? <laughs> Probably. No, no, this... This time it's just delicious, delicious coffee. Ooh. Um, it's it's dark roast. It was just brewed. I've got some cream and sugar in it, and goddamn, it hits the spot. And the <laughs> best the best thing ever is this big ass carafe. <laughs> yeah. That's, it that's is a full monster. Of <laughs> it is piping hot. Oh Jesus. It is glorious. Hold on a second. So I, I'm just now looking at the actual cast. Where the f- where, Tom? Where, where where are you visiting today? Uh, so I decided to take a small trip up to Alaska. Um, I can't really tell you, you where I'm at in Alaska, or else I would have to kill you. Uh, but I'm here on a job. You, you, you look like you're in danger there. No, it's it's fine. It's totally fine. <laughs> uh, I've got this uh, this cool robot exoskeleton sort of suit thing, mm. and I'm sure that it'll protect me from anything that happens. Nice. Yeah, that's it's um it's from Metal Gear Solid, Eric. <laughs> okay, thank <Metal> you. <laughs> so Tom's drinking As coffee. Who... I'm drinking. Uh, I got tea here, just black tea. But I decided I was gonna put some sugar in it because I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll drink it sweet this time. I don't do that a lot. Uh, hot tea to clarify. And instead of sugar, I used maple syrup. <laughs> oh shit! It's that's actually great. yeah, it's not bad. It's pretty good. Yeah, I I'm drinking a pumpkin cider, which is odd when I heard it, and it's <laughs> yeah odd to drink. It's not bad. It's just interesting. Hmm. So I've been doing a lot of uh, pumpkin like stouts and porters and ales, and you know those are heavier flavored beers, so they make sense with the heavy flavor of pumpkin. Ciders are not heavy. No. No. So having a little hint of pumpkin in it is odd. It matches like now, the fall flavors though, because apple is like a fall thing, isn't it? Apple cider. Yes. Yeah. So now, is it a little hit of pumpkin, or is it like cider with like overwhelming amounts of pumpkin? Very, very light pumpkin. Like if okay. you used to tell them it's just a weird cider, people may not even realize there's pumpkin in it. Hmm. All right. Like it is a super, super light pumpkin flavor. I might be able to get into that. It's by Ace. They make a pineapple cider that's fucking stellar. I like pineapple, but I, like- I think it's it's overused in most things. I used to hate pineapple, especially like the actual as the fruit, but I could drink yeah. its juice, which is weird. I like pineapple. Yeah. Pineapple's top S tier fruit. Really? Yep. I'm also I'm not a, a fruit person, so the few that I really enjoy are S tier, for me. So that's kind of how like that. I works. would have to put like pomegranates or strawberries up there for me. Pomegranates are so good. Yeah, they are. They're a pain in the ass. I don't care. God, for, they're good. I don't care for strawberry much. Strawberry, I could, uh, I could absolutely get into. I love strawberry just about anything. So Edberg calls out mangoes. Mangoes are solid. Okay. <laughs> so um, when I was in New York, uh, some of my coworkers are from India and I love New York because it's so culturally diverse. Mm-hmm. So like we were going to some authentic restaurants, kind of cool. There was Ooh. a street vendor selling fresh cut mangoes and they're like, man, it's oh. just like back home. And the best thing is they had chili powder, fresh cut mango, and then they put chili powder on it. So oh, good. Oh, that sounds interesting. So good. So good. That sounds really interesting. I want to try that. Hmm. If I, I highly recommend it. Like it wasn't even really spicy. It just it put that spice flavor in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just just a little something. A little something. Yeah, something. Re- just the right flavor compliment right there. But yeah, it's super good. And uh relentless calls out papaya. I don't know that I've ever had papaya. I've had papaya once, but I liked it. The only time I've had papaya was dried papaya in like a trail mix or something. Yeah. What? I was thinking plantains for a second. I was like, isn't that pretty much banana? I'm like, no, that's plantain. No, plantain. 
Plantain is like a, a not sweet banana, kind of. I've had fried oh, yeah, plantains. They're pretty good. Mangoes to me are that that one fruit that I love. Anytime I've had a mango, my life substantially, like the quality increases a lot. But I just never buy them, and I don't know why. Agreed. The only fruit I buy for myself are like the little cutie tangerines. Or yeah, clementine. I get those. I get apples, bananas sometimes, but not mangoes. And I really should change that. You should. I don't get bananas because I'll forget about them. By the time I remember it, they're like black. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I get bananas a lot. Bananas, occasionally blueberries. Blueberries. And uh, I think that's about it. Blueberries, though. So I'm, I'm going to quote uh, something I, I read on Twitter. Like blueberries can either just be like the spawn of the devil and just awful. They can be the most magical thing in the world. You know what's consistent every single time? Doritos. God damn it. They are pretty consistent. <laughs> Other than that, like that one chip in every bag that has just way too much dust on it. In I a good in a good like, way. I, <laughs> okay. Okay. That's the best say. chip in the bunch, I'm sure it, obviously, but it's the salt I know what chip those words Chipotle. mean individually, but not put together. Oh, like the that. Chipotle like, salt lime dust. chip. Oh man. That awesome. Just, oh, that's so good. Oh, okay. I I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Someone <laughs> called me out on a reference here. I'm not used to people knowing that reference. I just got caught out for a laboratory show reference. <laughs> that's fantastic. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> Was that some kind it's of Pokemon? Fine. Yeah, yeah. Poke no, it's a, it's a sports, not sports podcast. Oh, so, best. no, no worries. I'll just have to talk to Relentless about that sometime now that I know he's a car guy. <laughs> the only anyway. reason I know what that is is because I used to ride with you to work and you listen to him. <laughs> yeah, he, he's a he's an interesting fella. So um, I do have one thing for food I want to get to real quick. Before I saw we you try to on. steal that, Adam. I almost got it. It was so close. I wanted to wait until the very last second. So what do you guys think of peanut butter pie? Big fan. Yeah, it's fucking great. It's almost nothing so, better. S tier pie. So yep. what do you think of like uh single bite brownies? Yeah. Um so, dangerous because I will eat them until they're gone. What if I told you you can get peanut butter pie the shape of a one bite brownie? I'm listening. Ooh, okay. Okay. So at one point my roommate made like these apple pie tarts that were excellent. And all of a sudden, I was thinking yesterday, I'm like, you know what? I could do this with peanut butter pie. So I go and get graham crackers and make my own graham cracker crust from scratch. And I typically think it's too crumbly. So I add egg to densen this shit up. Turns out to be like small graham cracker cookies. And I put them in a tart tray, bake them, and then put peanut butter pie mix in that shit. Oh, my God. It's killer. So good. That sounds fantastic. It's like the yeah, perfect that's... amount of cookie-ish crust to peanut butter pie in every fucking bite. That sounds so good. Yeah, I, I was I was really pleased. When I first baked it, I'm like, I don't know how this is going to turn out. I was happy. The steaks I made last night, the other hand, not as great. Not as great? No. They, they were cooked, cooked well. Them too much? The steaks themselves. No, they, they were cooked fine. I didn't do anything beforehand for him so i mean they were just a they were a cheap steak oh okay connective That's tissue fair. running through it so it was, it was a little Ooh. chewy but it was good flavor but yeah i wanted to get this peanut pie butter pie out there because i'm proud of those those things yeah. are fucking off send me one okay <laughs> <laughs> uh so how about you guys this week anything entertaining fun amusing not um particularly. not really um, I'm taking next week off of work. So this week's Ooh. work was, you know how you have some time off coming up and like the day or two before that time off are like the best two days of work you've had in a while because you know that you're not going to have to deal with it for very long. <laughs> yep. You just enjoy like, it. I was in such a better short. mood <laughs> Friday <laughs> knowing that I'm not going to have to go back on Monday. It's so good. Nice. Just, I, uh, I took Monday off. I'm making a long weekend. Nice. Nice. Good for you. I've got, uh, not next week, but the week after I'm taking off. 
the whole week. I might yeah. not even be around for the podcast, so you wow. guys might have to. Oh no! Going on a trip? Trying to kill something. Oh. Going deer hunting, so taking a whole week off, going east side. Nice. Yeah. Gonna be well trying to go east side. The east side's not on fire. The east side's on fire. I'm going out to the peninsula. <laughs> <laughs> what if the peninsula's on fire? The peninsula is a fucking rainforest. If it's on fire, we got an issue. Like it's literally I mean, classified as a rainforest. You never know. True. Brazil was on fire, so yeah, I can see it. But that was awesome, man. Made anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so that that'll that'll be fun. It should um, be a good time. Yeah. So if no one has anything else, to talk about. Should should we should we go ahead and get into video games this early? I guess. Early early video games. Early video I'm games. Down. I played Rocket League this week, like yeah. on my own volition, outside of a podcast. Yeah, nice. Did you play fun. with? Did you play with anybody? No, no. I was just really solo. Day solo. Hey, yeah, what the fuck are you talking about? Am I no one now? <laughs> no, no, I mean we played together, but that was like a drop in the bucket of my Rocket League time. I actually put in substantial hours for me this week, which is you know more nice. than two. <laughs> yeah, I said given twos every Saturday, so yeah. Yeah, yeah. We even ran a tournament together, didn't we? Yeah, we did. We I forgot bad, about that. But we did. Hey, doesn't matter. <laughs> I felt bad because you got pulled into the champ tournament. Eh. I didn't. I'm care. at least that That's good. Fun. You see, I'm like, <laughs> I know my rank says gold three, but I'm really a like grand champ two. I just get bad teammates. Yeah. yeah. That's what happens when you play with me all the time. You get bad teammates. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Eric is the quintessential bad teammate. Exactly. Man, I'm having major You've never had a bad right teammate until you've had Eric. <laughs> he is the worst. And then when you finally do score, he steals that shit. Yep. I steal him back. Don't worry. But I'm no, trying. um, playing Snow Day with you was a lot of fun, though. That was a I good time. I fucking love Snow Day. I really do. I, uh, I got my ranks. I am, uh, what am I? Plat Gold 2 th- in Rumble? And uh, gold three in Snow Day. Very cool. Yeah. And I, yeah. I would like to thank bumping my teammates for all of that because that's that's really, really what did it. <laughs> yeah, Snow Day, we went on a fucking tear. Did you? Yeah, we did. How many games did you play? Yeah. Oh man, five. We played all. I think we ended up playing total all the qualifiers together. So at least ten. Oh, because those two different nights we did Snow Day. Yeah. yeah. That's right. On multiple occasions, we optionally queued into Snow Day. Yeah. All on our own. We're, we're masochistic. <laughs> so, I don't uh, you, why people fucking hate Snow Day. I really love that game mode. I know I don't people don't like the, the puck, but come on. It's so much fun. The way it plays. So when you do cool shit in it, it feels awesome. Like I hit a ceiling shot in Snow Day. It felt fucking awesome. <laughs> I'll never do it again, but <laughs> I got my uh, I got yeah. some of my placement matches done this week. I actually got my one v one placements done. Oh, nice! Uh, where, where, which was interesting. In? Champ one, which is higher, nice. which is higher than I was at the end of last season. So they might have adjusted the rank thresholds a little bit for one v one. It's insane because I was like, I, know. I think I ended. I didn't play a lot of ones in any way, but I think I ended Diamond 2 in ones last season, and somehow I placed in Champ 1. God damn. That's impressive. What, the ones rank is rough. Yeah. I know a lot of people right now are getting stuck lower. Like Smig, he placed into Champ 2, and he dropped into Champ 1, and he was having some trouble solo queuing out of there. Oh, wow. Well, because you have to think. I mean that champ one's all the old GCs. Yeah, yeah. So you're not you're not playing actual champ one players. M- mixed point. mixed with probably some of the champ two and champ three players too. So, yeah. So I mean it's it's a mixed bag right now. I I've been avoiding doing my placements, which is stupid. I should really just, just do, do it them. and get it over yeah. with. But yeah, who cares? I mean that's that's how I've started looking at ranked. Is you know. Why do I why do I care? The the reason I play ranked is so if a goal happens in the first minute, 
I'm not left alone in the game. Like yeah, at least exactly. <laughs> at least in well, the nice you know, it takes a little bit more effort for somebody to leave. Yeah. Well, not and much. the matches the matches tend to be better. Yeah. Which is nice. Yeah. That's I think why I really like it. <laughs> when me and you play twos, Eric, I think half the time we play ranked, even though that sometimes we have a, a decent rank disparity for twos. Um because it's just easier. Like we actually get to play full matches and stuff. Like yeah. when once the carousel starts, man, we'll have like twenty minutes without a complete game, which is just <laughs> dog shit. Yeah. Although you improved a lot last season, Eric. I, we weren't that far apart when uh, towards the end of last season. You really ranked up. It seems like I put some time in. Always but cool to see I'm your friends also, get better. I'm also super spotty. Yeah. Well, me too. I mean. I think most people are until they get to a certain point. <laughs> I, I I played a fuck Thomas Smig. That really helped. Yeah, he's a monster. He's good. He's Call really out good the Smig. Game. Thank you, man. You're fucking great. Oh, I don't even know how that goal happened. That was weird. I don't know. That was awesome. I, I remember being disappointed that my flip wasn't going to hit the ball into the net, and then it went into the net. <laughs> so, <laughs> so. All right, Tom. I'm going to ask you about a game real quick. Oops. I want to get this out here now because I want to make sure we get plenty of time to talk about it. Okay. Tell me about Ghost Hunter. <laughs> yes, I want to know because I, um, okay. from, from Josh's recommendation and stuff, I actually bought that today. I haven't had a chance to play it. So I'm really Phasmo curious. Phasmophobia. None of us could pronounce it last night when we were in game and couldn't like read the title screen. So we we called it everything phantasmagoria uh some Which, things that are not by, appropriate to say by, the, uh, by the way that yeah. is that is a game on steam it and I, <laughs> that's the first thing what? i pulled up i was like what phantasmagoria and then i was like this looks like a point and click of it this is not <laughs> this is not the game that's awesome i'm just losing frames right now this is but, so annoying no oh, but i remember um josh came into the discord and showed us the trailer of this like explicitly showed us this he's like you guys need to yeah. check this out mm -hmm. and i remember watching that trailer and it was that beautiful suspense feeling the entire time without the cheap jump scare and yeah. instantly i'm like i'm intrigued i love I was the afraid it was gonna be cheap jump, jump scare it's the game and it, it just wasn't at all it's very well made from what I understand, so, um, the jump scare is basically the fail state or something. Uh, yeah, kind of. Which is a I good mean, like, It's a good time for a jump scare in a game. The fail yeah. state is the perfect time for that. Yeah. Because it's basically punishment for losing. Yeah. Like Five Nights at Freddy's. Exactly, yeah. That jump scare at the end of Friday Night, Five Nights at Freddy's when you lose, I mean, that, that, that makes and, you piss your pants and sometimes. And sometimes, even if you know it's coming, it still gets you. <laughs> like, sometimes there's just yeah. nothing you can do about it. And I think timing That's is a huge part of that. Part. Like the, the classic most, like, waiting for it is the worst part yeah, by far. Yeah. Oh yeah. It gives you what time to me? scare yourself in your own head, basically. Yeah. When it doesn't come is when it really fucks yeah. with me. When you yeah. think it's there. Yeah. And then it's mm -hmm. not. It's classic jump jump scare tactics are build suspense, build suspense. They know a jump scare is going to be coming, build suspense. And then the part where they think the jump scare is about to happen, it doesn't happen. You wait, and yeah. then you hit them. So you it gives the it gives them time to anticipate the jump scare, you know, build up that tension, and then oh maybe it's not going to happen. And when they doubt themselves, that's when you can scare them the most. Yeah, that's when you so, need to go back to the bedroom and change your underpants. Yes, if you've ever seen one of those like shitty like quote quote reality show uh ghost hunter things on like the discovery channel uh -huh. that is what this game is that that is how it's set up so you are a team of shitty discovery channel brand ghostbusters and it's your job to determine um like what this ghost is like you literally have a tobin spirit guide-esque book you can flip through it's like okay well this ghost will do these things in the environment and have this evidence that it leaves behind. And mm. these ones will do these things. And like, you have to figure out exactly what the ghost is doing and like the effects it has in the environment. Like to give a concrete example, you've got an EMF reader. And if it goes to five, that's, um, sorry, my phone is going crazy because I didn't, I didn't silence it. 
Um, anyway, um, so like you have an EMF reader and if it hits five, if it buries a needle, you know, okay, so we've got EMF five that rules out this type and this type. These three are on the table still. What about ghost writing? And then you've got like certain items in the truck that you have to use to figure out not only where, um, where like uh, what room the ghost is hiding in, but you have to figure out what exactly it's doing to determine what kind of ghost it is. Uh, and you have bonus objectives like, hey, prevent a haunting with a crucifix or use a smudge stick or prevent it from leaving with salt. Um, and as you complete extra objectives, um, you get extra cash, which you can use to buy extra items and level up and get bigger and better missions. So there's actually a progression system in this multiplayer horror game. The thing I'm most proud of in this game I have never seen a multiplayer horror game actually work. That was because yeah, like, like you're sitting with friends, right? Like how, how are you going to be legitimately scared? Everyone's like hanging out. That's but exactly the question I was going to have because multiplayer horror works. is not, you know, any anytime you have somebody with you and you take away that, that loneliness and vulnerable feeling, um, mm. the effectiveness of horror games goes down drastically. Even just, even just streaming a game on Twitch and then having some sort of chat in there um, yeah. can absolutely make make a game way less intense. Because you're not alone. Exactly. You've, you've got people. There. It's, it's mm -hmm. safer, right? Um, luckily, this game, uh, it I don't know how they did it, but it fucking works. Even when we were in Discord, which is not the recommended way to play this game, there is an in-game voice chat. Mm -hmm. um, it worked i was i was spooked the whole time now how i was playing the game was a little little bit different than how most other people are going to be playing this game i did uh i played in vr the entire time oh it i'm is, sure that helps too <laughs> it is a full co-op cross play vr non-vr um and god damn it worked so well uh, there is something about being in a haunted house, like physically in a haunted house, wearing that headset where you're trying to physically run away from the ghost. That just makes it so good. Uh, I was freaked the fuck out. Um, and it's you're right. Like it just hits that tension. There's not a lot of cheap jump scares and it works. There were <laughs> there are so many moments because like you can piss off the ghost. You can make it angry and have it kill you. And you know when it's going to happen. You know when it's getting pissed off because, like, the hauntings get more intense. It's so, like we'd be sitting there and we'd be, like, saying things, which I'm going to get to here in a bit, but we'd be saying things to the ghost. And uh, then all of a sudden, like, the drawers kept opening or somebody slammed the door or fucking birds started flipping the light switch like a goddamn toddler and scaring the rest of us <laughs> like the asshole he is. Damn it, bird. <laughs> oh. And we hit this point where we're like, get out, get out. Everybody just fucking leave. And you see like everyone making a mad dash towards the door to get out of the house, uh -huh. including me making mad dashes across my living room in VR. Um, and it works so fucking well. Cause like you're all huddled in the truck. You're like, well, we gotta go back there. But, but do we maybe, maybe I'll stay out here. I'll watch the cams. You guys, you guys can go ahead and, and head back in the house. So I remember so, uh, Josh was talking about something where there was a room where everyone knew the ghost was in this room. And effectively, everyone was like, I don't want to go. You go. I don't want to go. You go. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to get the person to go into the room. So I, I'm assuming based on the number of people who have been playing it, that it works pretty well in VR and non VR. Yeah, it does. Now you can you can definitely tell somebody uh, like who is in VR and who isn't, uh -huh. uh, because the person in VR has control over their arms, and they look <laughs> goofy as shit compared to everybody else. So does that take so you out of the the mood? No, it doesn't. As as a matter of fact, it actually because there are some like hilarious parts to this game, like uh -huh. just through bugs or stupidness or, or goofing off it helps so much. Like, you know how you're scared and you get that nervous laughter thing because your body's like, oh, this is uncomfortable. I mm -hmm. need these endorphins. Let's just start laughing. That'll work. <laughs> um, like, that game, it happens all the time where we're doing something stupid and we're laughing because the alternative is to, like, shudder in fear. 
Um, so it, it's a nice, a nice balance, really. Um, so on, on talking, this game uses your default microphone and Windows speech recognition to actually speech to text so you can communicate with the ghost. Things okay. you say in the microphone and you being scared and making noise can attract the ghost. I so if you're, screaming, if you're scared, if you say the name of the ghost, you'll piss it off. If you say, who are you? And you're holding the, the spirit box that lets you talk to the thing. It might say, behind you. <laughs> and scare the shit out of you. Like, because you've got headphones on and that shit sounds like it's right fucking behind you. Like, yeah. Bird and I were in a room um, and we just started hearing, like, heavy breathing. <laughs> Literally between us. Like, I heard it on my left. He heard it on my right. And somebody behind us was like, guys, it's between you. It's right fucking between you. Oh, my God, leave. You have to get out now. And it was, <laughs> it was so fucking good. Um, so, yeah, there there are moments where you have to hide from a ghost and you have to be quiet. I have you been have waiting. Be quiet. I have been waiting since Alien Isolation in whatever year that came out to for more games to utilize the actual voice input mechanic not just as a communication feature yeah it works pretty well like it's not it's not perfect but mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be right because you're not like communicating with an npc you're communicating with something that probably doesn't want you there and may or may not answer you so mm -hmm. if like if you say, you know, who are you or how old are you or the other phrases that can trigger the ghost. ASL. Yeah, like <laughs> if, if it works or it doesn't, you don't necessarily know, right? It might just be the ghost not answering. So right. you can hide that technological limitation behind like story and gameplay reasons. And it That's works smart. so well. <laughs> um, also, VR players uh, have the ability to, um, I don't, I don't want to call it cheat. <laughs> but you are a little bit better off because when you're in, in a flat screen, you know, you've got, you got your, your item and you can hold that one item and use the one item. But in VR, when you have multiple hands, you can use two items at the same time. Whoa. Yeah. So I was holding a flashlight and an EMF reader. I'm like, I'm looking at the EMF. I'm pointing the flashlight. I'm trying to lead people through and it works so fucking well. Um, dying in VR to this ghost, to that jump scare. Top five uncomfortable experiences in VR. That was, <laughs> that was unfortunate in so many ways. That's awesome. I mean, there, there's uh, a yeah, whole, uh, there's a whole like genre of VR horror games. It's basically just like haunted house, jump scare, one after another simulator right yeah like that's kind of a, yeah. a gimmicky genre in the vr space have you pl played any of those uh i've played a couple um but you're right like most of the time it's just like here's a creepy environment we're gonna jump scare the fuck out of you guy uh and that's the game uh this is not that uh it's it's that spooky it's scary but it's not like existential dread horror like it is it is definitely like Halloween B movie type horror, but it works. Like it's it's fun to get scared, but it's not it's not the kind of scare that'll stick with you or ruin your weekend. Yeah. Like as soon as I stopped playing, it, it all wore off. Right? Unless you're Which already is... afraid of ghosts, right? Yeah. I I really, really enjoyed it because I could I could play the game and I could stop and I'm no longer like fearful for my existence, unlike some other horror games that I played, Silent Hill namely, where the scares just don't stop. <laughs> oh, I actually watched that movie recently, which was interesting from not playing. I the game love ever. the first Silent Hill movie. The second one is hot garbage, but the first one is great. Is the pre the premise of the game the same as the movie about like for, what Silent Hill is? Yeah, for the the first and second game because they're kind of intertwined in the first movie. Yes. Okay. What's cool is that uh, that weird tracking camera shot through the alley. I don't know if you remember that part yes, of the movie. Yes, I remember so that. It, That's a nod. That is literally, like, those camera movements are literally taken from Silent Hill 1, from, like, the first hour of the game. 
frame for frame, shot for shot, this is what happened in the game, and they they put it in the movie. The director of the first movie actually had a PS1 and PS2 running Silent Hill 1 and Silent Hill 2, so they could reference that when they were doing the cinematography. Super fucking cool. It's fantastic. Gina pointed that out to me, that it was a... um that it's still straight from the game Mm -hmm. for that part. I love when they do the little homages like that without it being like cheesy or forced or over the top. Like it fit fit the scene, right? It's like, Oh cool. Here's, here's something for the fans of the game. Um, without like detracting from the people who haven't played the game and are watching it. It wasn't like, like fucking doom the movie where the, fucking film goes to first person for no goddamn reason like <laughs> look it's a first person shooter so we made it first person don't you gamers love us <laughs> nah dude nah yeah so for me it, the biggest thing like you could tell if it's tasteful or not if you've never seen the game and you can't tell they're doing something that then it means it's very tasteful like i had yeah, no exactly. clue yeah. that was game yeah it just fit that sounds about right. Well, yeah. it's like yeah. if, like for for superhero movies, right? Like if you put in some stupid, convoluted lore backstory bullshit and an Easter egg, and every normal person in the audience just glosses over it because, like, all right, whatever. But the superhero fans in the back who have like read thirty years worth of comic books and understand the stupid intertwining timelines are like, oh my god, they did that thing with Namor. This is so cool then yeah, you've done a a good job, which frankly, the Marvel movies have done a fantastic job at most of that stuff. The Marvel Uh, movies were great. Yeah, the the stupid, you know, comic book timeline stuff doesn't negatively impact the movies because they find a way to like throw in like just a little pepper that the fans are going to get. But everybody else is just going to gloss over it. Well, and I mean, because they're in a lose-lose battle because it's either you do it to the T and you lose all your audience or you make it for Hollywood and you piss off the diehards. Yeah. I think they've hit that balance really well. Yeah, for so the most part, they've done really well. While we're on the subject of movies, even though it's not a video game movie, um, but it is October, it's spooky season, we're talking about a horror game. Um, I, I watched the uh, the Among Us movie for the first time. What? The, 19, the 1982 uh, Among Us movie called John Carpenter's The Thing. Oh. oh, I love that movie. <laughs> I have never, I'd never seen it. So I, I, never uh, I watched it for the first time um, a couple days ago. Well, that's a it? good movie. What... It's pretty good. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I, I liked it. I, it's not in my top 10 of all time kind of stuff that I know. It, I know it's, it's very, very highly regarded and I liked it. I liked the movie. Okay. Um, but it's a I, classic. I, yeah, it's a classic, and it it's it shows its age a little bit. Um, I will say the practical effects and all of that were, were absolutely fantastic, especially for its time. Like, it holds up in that aspect pretty well. Um, but it is an '80s, you know, horror movie with not amazing acting and, <laughs> you know, the usual '80s movie cheese. Um, but overall, I mean, it was really cool, there. and the concept is really cool. I love the concept conceptually it's different but in my mind i always had in my head this is close to the same era as alien and it kind of feels that way mm. yeah yeah so Which i know it's fine with me i love those yeah i know there was a 2011 the thing which i think is supposed to be a prequel or something uh i haven't seen that i don't know have you seen that one Eric? no i have not okay. seen that however I did see and play the game from like the mid two thousands, and that game was one of the few good licensed games I've ever played. Oh, really? Cool. It was actually pretty good. I didn't know there was a game. Very uh, Resident Evilly. Okay. Well, I mean, the way the action played out, Dead Space, Resident Evilish, like mm-hmm. RE four. Okay. Yeah, so it was it was, it was good. I enjoyed it. So yeah, yeah uh, Phasma, Phasmophobia. Phasmophobia. It's 13 bucks. It's on Steam right now. I can recommend it. Again, it is um, cross-play between flat screen and VR. So if you've got a VR headset, this is a no-brainer. If you don't, and you're looking for something spooky to play with friends, I'd I'd also call it a no-brainer. I I think the the game is 
honestly great for the price point. We had I got my 13 bucks out of it just last night. Um, yeah, yeah, I liked it. I'm gonna give it my recommendation. Also, uh, yeah. it is it is early access, so they are going to be improving it. Like you can tell, it's it is an indie project, right? It's not it's not gonna be perfect, but how it is today, it's frankly way more polished than most early access titles I've played. So, yeah, I recommend it. Yeah. Um, speaking of recommend, I shouldn't say it that way. Adam, yes, you're playing something that we talked about last week. Yes. Did we do it justice last week? And also clarify. Okay. So um, I gave in and I bought the Metal Gear Solid off of GOG, the PC. Metal Gear? Board. Metal Gear. Um, no, not Metal Gear. Metal Gear Solid. Those are different games. Um, I never did play the, the OG ones. but They're pretty good. Yeah. So so after all the you know the news stuff we did last week talking about Metal Gear Solid coming to GOG and it just got me wanting to play the game again and it's one of my favorite games of all time um I'm sure a lot of it's nostalgia because I was what 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 year did that game come out 1990 like 8 9 7 I thought it was 2000 Really? Okay. It couldn't have been 2000 though. No, anyway, no, no. I was before that. I think by anyway. the time I played it as a kid, I was like 10 or something. Um, but I proceeded to play that game. I think, I, I think I've think i beaten Metal Gear Solid 13 times. Overall. Dear Lord. <laughs> <laughs> now, 12 of those times were when I was between the ages of 10 and 12 or 13 maybe. <laughs> so, you know, that's how kids do. But um, so, yeah. So I, so I picked up the GOG PC port, um, which is the basically the PC port from whatever year that they did a couple of fixes on and put it on the GOG store. So it's actually accessible now for people, which is cool. Um, the PC port does have some issues. Uh, from what I understand, there were a lot of difficulties at the time porting the game to PC and a lot of workarounds had to be, you know, had to be a lot of workarounds and janky fixes and stuff, but they eventually got it working. But there are some known bugs in that port that are still persistent in this version. But I will say that those bugs are not that big of a deal. They're just not. Um, we I talked about it a little bit last week. Uh, one of the bugs is that they couldn't get all of the music exactly ported from the P uh, PlayStation version. So the boss battle music is replaced with the... I just got spotted by an enemy music. And then the evasion music, like when, once you kind of uh, hid from the enemy for a time and it, they're still in that caution phase, um, that music just isn't there. It just keeps playing the alert music. But I will say that those three tracks, the evasion, the alert, and then like the boss battle music that they use for everything, they're all very similar pieces of music. So if you haven't played Metal Gear Solid, you're not going to notice and it's not going to matter. It, I mean, as much as I love the music in that game and I like the boss battle variation of that music, um, even playing it again, I don't feel like I'm really missing out. That So the one issue I have with that is it seems so goddamn arbitrary. It's not like those are licensed music tracks or anything. Like, you got the rest of the music working in the game. Uh -huh. Why the fuck are certain tracks missing? I, I don't I, know. I don't there, I... From what I understand, they actually had to rip those tracks from a Metal Gear Solid fan site to add oh. into the PC port. <laughs> now, I don't know the details, so I can't... I don't know why. I don't know what happened, but that that's one of the ways they got some of the music in, which is why some of the stuff is missing. So, okay, I, I'm, I sound incredulous, but <laughs> what you said was actually extremely <laughs> common for older titles i think only nintendo was really active about like preserving source code and what originally made up the game like uh -huh. uh, so pokemon the battle system in in pokemon red and blue is actually lost to time the only official like this is how things work and why they work this way like the only documentation is the code itself so satoru iwata when he was helping out with with gold and silver to put uh and, and pokemon stadium to recreate the og battle system 
actually had to dig through the code of red and blue and reverse engineer the goddamn thing because it was just lost to the sands of time. Mm -hmm. um, that happens all the fucking time in old games. So yes, my, my modern sensibilities are saying, wait, you what? <laughs> <laughs> you had to rip the assets from a goddamn fan fight? But <laughs> frankly, that's the reality for most older games is once that shit's on a disc, you throw away everything that went into making it, which is unheard of today. Yeah. Oh, right? yeah. And I, it, I didn't actually know that, so I'm glad that you kind of gave me that insight a little bit onto the situation. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's unfortunate and it's unconscionable, like in in the modern era. But yeah, yeah, yeah it, definitely, it was the reality. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, so that that's not really that big of a deal. The other thing was controller support is kind of weird. Uh, so. It supports X input, um, which I guess you can configure. There's uh, configurations in game. The thing that I ran into that was weird was if I have Steam running with the PS4 controller support on that I usually have on, um, it messes with the game. So I can't mm -hmm. bind my R1 button for some reason, and I can't bind the X button for some reason. But hmm. if I turn off... The if I turn off Steam, um, I can bind everything just fine, but the directional inputs are a little bit bugged. So if I want to use the D-pad for movement, it doesn't actually let me press more than one button at a time. So there's no diagonal movement at all. Oh, so oh, shit. so if you're gonna play this on PC, you have to use the analog stick for movement, which works fine. That's not a big deal, but that is that is kind of a janky bug i guess hopefully they actually work on fixing that i'm not sure if they are or not i know gog doesn't gog actually mod the games for compatibility yes, and stuff okay um but other than yeah, that that's one of the reasons why i buy old games <laughs> on gog because they uh -huh. go through an ungodly amount of effort to make it work on modern systems yeah but other other than those two things so far i haven't ran into any other bugs it's been nice to be able to save the game on a whim without having to call the Mei Ling on the codec. Uh, that's like a little quality of life thing. Um, other than like that, they added it's... save states? Yeah, pretty much. All right. Um, other than that, I mean, it's it's Metal Gear Solid. It's it's anime James Bond, right? It's <laughs> <laughs> it's It's been tons of fun playing it again. It's been long enough since I've played it that I still remember everything, but it's just fresh enough that I'm not just bored by it. Like I'm ready to experience it again, which is cool. Nice. Um, as far as Anim does, the I've never heard anime James Bond before. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it is makes, like yeah. you, you're playing the super soldier stealth guy infiltrating the thing, and there's terrorist groups, and the terrorist groups, and the dynamic between them and the. U.S. military and all kinds of stuff, and I know the Metal Gear Solid series is is kind of known for its ridiculous, convoluted plot. <laughs> it's bullshit. <laughs> but that's if you look at the whole series. Like the first game by itself is, you know, it's got some supernatural elements, and there's a lot of like conspiracy and group backstabbing and and weird plot devices and stuff. But it's not incomprehensible like the whole series is if you take everything yeah. put it put it together. One the first is by game far itself the most grounded. By far, yeah. By far the most grounded. And that's that's why it's my favorite one, honestly. When you because say one, you're talking Metal Gear Solid. Metal Gear Metal Solid. Gear. Yeah, yeah. Solid Metal one. Gear Solid. You don't you don't have to play the old games to understand what's going on, really. They nah. kind of explain so it. So how do the games connect? Metal so, Gear versus Metal Gear Solid. They, oh my they, god! They are actually directly yeah. connected. Uh -huh. The events of Metal Gear Solid or Metal Gear One and Two are chronological, uh, and then Solid is uh, basically where Snake is pulled back from retirement after being a super soldier and doing sneaky like special forces missions, and he doesn't want to come back, but he has to because you're the only man who can. <laughs> um. Yeah, there's and then actually in Metal Gear Solid, plot points from Metal Gear Solid 2 um, are made way, way more important than they were in the second game at all, um, which is interesting. I'll I try I not to spoil it. There. there, there are recurring characters and events from Metal Gear 2 that make an appearance and actually are extremely important to the plot points in Metal Gear Solid 1. Okay. 
I guess I don't remember that um, much about as much about two is is one, so I'm not really sure which specific things you're talking about, but but yeah. Uh if I say Frank, you'll you'll probably get it. Frank, Frank was the at the end of the second game and you fought him in a minefield, and then he makes an appearance in Metal Gear Solid. Uh several appearances. A whole lot of appearances. Appearances. Wait. Oh, is it the no. Yeah. Who's Frank? Kind of, kind of gray. He's a little foxish. I could also ask you the question: Who's that ninja? Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, yeah. Right. We're getting into the weeds. Either way, they're yeah, connected. Yeah. They're connected. Yeah. Anyways, you know, you're solid. The story is actually kind of cool, um, and it's not crazy and comprehensible, messy. Like it, it's a cool story, I think. And it's interesting playing an old PlayStation One game with its old PlayStation One graphics. For a game that is very cinematic and like movie like in a way, it's interesting seeing those low polygon models and in like with okay voice acting for the time and you know cinematic camera angles and cutscenes and stuff. Like, I guess for its time, I mean, that was absolutely revolutionary, right? Did a lot of games do that much cinematography and stuff before that game? Uh, Final Fantasy. Did, That's what's yeah. in my mind, too. Yeah. Final Fantasy VI, believe okay. it or not. So you actually had, like, big cinematic cutscenes of, like, little pixel art characters. Mm-hmm. Um, and my... So I went back and I played Final Fantasy VI after seven and nine. I was like, oh, shit, this is where Square started to get serious. Yeah. Um, it, it's weird going back and seeing, like, modern Final Fantasy, but in a pixel art style. It's cool. I can see that. So I, I do have a question about the game, though. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I think it's something that people are going to want to know. What's a Russian gunship doing here? <laughs> a high and D. Oh, man. I, All right. I think I, it feels like I know this game, like, word for <laughs> word. <laughs> I've played it so many times. I love the quotes. The game itself is good, though. I, I don't know if it holds up gameplay-wise because I am absolutely shrouded in nostalgia. Um, it's a PS... It's a third-person action PS1 game. Like, it's it's not going to play like The Last of Us 2. <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, I'm, I'm loving it so far again. Well, nice. Good deal. Something I've been loving. Um, actually, I only played about two hours of it. Mario 35 launched. What is Mario 35? It's so okay. fucking weird. So if I was to say Tetris 99, what's your response? Um, why was there a Battle Royale Tetris, even though it seemed to work and people loved it? Okay. <laughs> I was hoping for uh, what was that? Um, so effectively, Mario 35 takes the same template as Tetris 99, where you have 35 players. Everyone starts at, for simplicity, I'm just going to say 1-1. One, one. So everyone's on 1-1. One, one. As I kill that first Goomba, I have four options of where that Goomba is going to go. But for, let's just say, I kill that Goomba, it just goes to someone else's game. So all of a sudden, instead of just that one Goomba, that person now has two Goombas there. So as you kill enemies, you are putting them into other players' games. And the objective is to be the last man standing. And, you know, alone on that, it's really fun. It's really cool. But what's really interesting is... When you use warp gates, like at the end of one, two, there's a three tunnel or a three tube warp you can use. Anyone who knows Mario knows about this. Mm -hmm. They adjust that in this game where it's randomly deciding what levels it'll take you to. So let's say, and then you'll, so you'll randomly start going to levels. It's not actually sequential. So at one point I was going down one, one, someone else went to like four, two, they killed a hammer bro in the fourth world and it spawned a hammer bro in one one on me i had a squid <laughs> in one one on me <laughs> so it's a so, i mean it's it's familiar levels with a twist right yes it is absolutely the og levels there's nothing about it it's just all of the things that spawn are what make it different and difficult and when you're getting so some of the options on who gets targeted whenever you kill something is stuff like whoever has the lowest amount of time left, whoever has the most coins, and stuff like that. You know when you're that criteria, 
because you're going from just playing and getting one, two from random people to all of a sudden you're getting hundreds of enemies getting thrown into your game because you are the one with the most time. Therefore, everyone chooses you. <laughs> and it gets nuts. So is this, um, is it modern visuals or is it no. the OG no, visuals? No, it's, it's old, okay. old school NES graphics. Okay. And the one big difference is you don't just get like, what, I think two minutes is the OGs yeah. to run a level. You start with 30 seconds. Every oh. time you kill a monster, you get a second. Okay. okay. So Some it, of the harder ones will give you more time. So the idea is you got to kill to get time. So you can't just take your sweet ass time getting through the levels. That post avoid mechanic we talked about last week, kind of. Yes. It's super fun, super addicting. Um, I don't know how long the staying power is because, I mean, in the end of the day, it is just Mario. But it is really fun and it's free if you have the Nintendo online service. Oh, cool. That's a nice touch. So I I recommend anyone who has that service pick up this game. It's worth trying out just because it's super unique. I enjoyed the the first two matches I played. I didn't know what was going on at first because the game has no tutorializing. Like you nope. hit start and it drops you in and you just have to figure it out. Yeah. Luckily, it's not a super complex game, but I don't know. Maybe I'm getting old and I was expecting like to go through a tutorial or to get an explanation. Nah, it's it's the best of the NES games where it's just like, I don't know, you hit start, dude figure out the rest um i absolutely didn't get my bindings right at first and i thought i was running when i wasn't oh and i ended up not making a jump because of it but yeah it's it's super fun i i'm very very pleased with it and i'm very upset that nintendo was pulling it in march are they they're pulling it why they they said up front this is a short-term game all right hmm why <laughs> with, with i hope things, seasonal I hope games be, i hope that's what they do with it i hope they bring it back every three months or something because then you're guaranteed to have the player base to keep the game alive that's what i'm thinking yeah, like if that's true battle royales if they don't have enough players they just die like it's not like it's not like there are really good bots you can play against so i mean yeah i'm hoping that's what it is but it's fun super fun um, Tom, you go over some of your other quick hit ones before we get into my last new thing. All right. I played some more sunshine, some more galaxy. Um, so I love Mario 64 sunshine solid. Odyssey is amazing. That first world, the, the music in Mario galaxy is by far the best Mario music ever. Bar none cannot be beaten. God damn, it just fills you with, like, goddamn hope. Like, the whole thing is fully orchestrated. If you haven't played Galaxy, you owe it to yourself to even just play the first star of that first world, because it is fucking legit. Um, I decided to play... Uh, I played a little bit of Mario 35, a little bit of CSGO, um, a little bit of Post Void, a little bit of Hades. I got to what I think is the last boss in Hades. Um, and I died to it. So I'm, I'm getting better at my runs. I'm getting more powerful and more able to complete stuff. So that's nice. Um, you guys know that like in, in a roguelite, when you, you get to the final boss and you die, like, it's just, it's a matter yeah. of like fucking runs till you've, you've destroyed the game. Right. Yeah. So I'm, I'm super excited because in Hades, it actually unlocked like some cool story stuff and the world changed a little bit and it was really really weird to see um like i'm not used to things fundamentally changing when you get close but you don't beat the game uh but mm. no i got a whole lot of cool story stuff out of that so it's nice um mm. i decided to try phoenix right ace attorney on my phone because hashtag don't you guys have phones um <laughs> and in reality i i bought this for the switch and i never really put a bunch of time into it I love Ace Attorney, but I don't really play my Switch all that much. So I decided I wanted a new toilet game. I said it. I'm just going to come out, be completely <laughs> honest. I want to play. Um, I want to play Phoenix Wright, and I want to just hit it real quick when I've got 
a couple minutes. Uh, it's good. It's really fucking good. It's the same remastered uh, art style and music from uh, like the version I bought on the Switch. But the best part is I can save anywhere. Like I can I can hit the menu. I can save like right in the middle of a text bubble and come back right to it again. I can just minimize the app and go to something else or put it in my pocket and and pull it back and I'm right where I left off, which is super great for a game that was just like uh that's uh literally an interactive storybook. Sorry, that save fucked me up. I am <laughs> mad about that. So it's uh, funny because I've never played these, but for some reason I got on. I don't even know what it is about them. What even is okay, it? Okay, so Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney is a visual novel about a lawyer, and you gotta solve cases. That sounds like the Fantastic. worst, most boring <laughs> game in the world. But god damn, is it so fucking engaging? Like. You will be, you'll get mad at characters, you'll yell, you'll get super excited when somebody's like, I don't know, man, it was like 1 p.m. or something. That's when I found the body. And you just scream objection. In the DS version, you could actually, in at least the Japanese version, you could scream objection after holding a button to turn on the mic. And it would it would object in the game, which is so cool. But like you've got that one piece of evidence, you know the guy's lying, your client's innocent. He totally killed her. He's not gonna get away with it. And you have the one piece of evidence to tie the case together and push things in your favor. Uh, and it's great. It's fantastic. The music is standard Capcom fare, which is to say incredibly addictive and some of the best music in any game you will ever hear. Um, yeah, I, I love it. I love the Ace Attorney games. And this is the trilogy. You will get a whole bunch of cases to run through uh, for not all that much money. Um, so... Yeah, if if you want to try out Ace Attorney, you can't do much better than the version on your phone. And play it on the pooper. Yep. <laughs> Solving cases right. on the pooper like any other good attorney. <laughs> yeah. That's where all good law work goes. Yeah. Uh, it's a shit job, else? but somebody's got to do it. Jesus. Boo. That was awful, Tom. That was fucking <laughs> awful. You're welcome. Uh, you got any other little onesie twosie games, or should we yeah. go ahead and get into it? I mean, I I beat Broken Reality, um, that vaporwave first person exploration almost Metroidvania game. Uh, I completed that because uh, I was I was getting close. It was about twelve hours long. Frankly, it's two hours longer than uh, than it really should have been. Yeah, I, I got really sick of the, the stupid like platforming and then, OK, this door leads to this area, which leads to this thing. And then I've got to go over here and then I hit this switch. Now I've got to go over this way. Like, have you ever played a game where you were just done? You were just ready for it to be over. Like, yep. go to Game Facts. Let's just get this shit over with. Yep. Hit the checkbox and call it done. Yep. Um, that's kind of where I hit with Broken Reality. Unfortunately, two hours before the ending. Um, so I, I have to say, I like the game. I really do. Um, I completed it. The ending was very interesting. Not what I expected at all. I'm not going to spoil anything, but damn, that got fucking weird. Um, Are you satisfied with it, though? Yeah, yeah, I was. I was. I really liked the game. Aside from it being, I think, a little bit too long, I really, really liked it. Now, is it is it amazing? Is it for everybody? Is it at the right price point? No. <laughs> maybe maybe an emphatic hell no. I think 15 bucks was way, way too much for, for this game. Seven, yeah, I could see. Ten, you could make an argument. Um, but yeah, no, if you if you want to just like vibe out in like a vaporwave sort of first person area and explore and do stupid stuff in a 3D version of GeoCities. You could do a whole lot worse than broken reality. Right. Um, you also were started to play it. This one I think's from about 2014 or something. Tacoma? Yeah. Yeah. Toyota Tacoma. Uh, so, yes. Yeah. 
Uh, it's a first person walking simulator. Walk around, listen to the people say some stuff, and then potentially solve a mystery at the end of it. Um, the point of the game is that you're like, I want to say like uh, something similar to an insurance adjuster. And you're trying to figure out why this ship, you know, had problems and people evacuated. And you run around and you can access the recorded logs, memories, conversations um, of the crew members. Or not memories, but the recorded conversations. Because you can go in, like, and get access to the AI's files. Uh, so, like, where conversations will happen simultaneously around different areas of the ship. So if you're following like the medic and the biologist around and they're talking about like some bullshit, then some other people in the ship would be in a completely different area where you can't overhear their conversation. So you kind of have to piece things together and build your own timeline as you go along. It's an interesting idea. So far, I like it. Um, but the uh, if you're not a fan of super fucking on the no on the nose storytelling, um, don't play this. There, there is no subtlety in Tacoma whatsoever. <laughs> um, so the ship workers are gig economy workers, and uh, they don't get paid in real money. They get paid in loyalty bucks by their company, where they can shop at the company store. And uh, the executives are like, hey, I'll be gone for the next eight months on vacation, but you guys can take care of this, right? I'll be back. Just let my assistant know what you need. Um, like super on the nose anti-capitalist storytelling um i like it so far but goddamn, they they could have been maybe a smidge <laughs> more subtle than a cinder block to the face yeah i thought that's how you liked your story uh, no i i like good storytelling and with this some subtlety is definitely wanted and craved um <laughs> Somebody saying, oh, no, look, I know it's dangerous and we're probably going to die, but I just need to get to this point for my my company fun bucks to vest. Like, <laughs> OK, <laughs> I get it. I understand what you're going for. But did it need to be like that over? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. So people need to be told straight up. <laughs> this so, uh, is how yeah. you need to feel. Yes, I uh, I'll be completing that since I broke or broke since I beat broken reality. I've now got uh, some more time for some more adventure gamey sort of things to go through. So I'll let you guys know soon what I think about all of Tacoma. Fantastic. Yeah. So, um, so a, no. Star, a, a new Star Wars game no. came out. No. Yes, it's, e yes, it's it EA. I don't want to hear about it. They've already ruined Star Wars with the last game they put out. This one can't be good at all. There's no fucking way. Why would anyone even buy this like right on release? I'm sure it's full of goddamn microtransactions. I'm sure the gameplay is shallow and shitty. And at the very least, I'm sure you've got to grind for an insane amount of time to get any upgrades whatsoever. All right. So, Eric, so, tell us why the game is actually good. So let me backtrack one thing that I hate that Tom always says about the last game. Battlefront 2 was a really fucking good game. It was. They put some bullshit micros in there, but the core game was really good. But that said, Star Wars Squadrons launched Thursday night slash Friday. Damn, it's good. It is a fucking good game. Um, okay. And to next round, just so you know, Tom has played it. He just hates EA and he feels like he's <laughs> going to die a little on the inside. Anytime he has to compliment something EA's done. I, I needed, I needed to say that. So I would get my 72 pin connector paychecks at the end of the month. as part of my contract. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Honestly, I was playing squadrons last night for a few hours. I fucking love it. Holy <laughs> shit. That game is so goddamn good. Everything about it is good. All the EA bullshit. Like I, it, it shouldn't even say EA on the box. Like I went in expecting dog shit. And what I got was one of the best games, one of the best Star Wars games I've played since fucking Rogue Squadron on the N64. Like this shit is legit. Absolutely legit. I haven't seen even, even one goddamn piece of bullshit in this game. It works in VR. It works with uh, like flight sticks and throttles. And God damn it, I love this game. And it was only 40 bucks. What the hell? So 
something really fucking cool about this. Um, so a lot of times people say like, well, why don't they just make regular 2D games VR? That's really what they did. They made this game yeah. as a standard game. And because it's a cockpit type game, they just drop fucking VR into the cockpit and it works fucking great. It's perfect. Like, you can free look around and you can actually look up and track people with your eyes. It's awesome. Oh my God. It was so crazy. I was chasing a TIE fighter and I was like doing this. I'm like looking all around out my windows to see where this fucking guy went. It was amazing. And by the way, I'm using it in VR with a flight stick and flight throttle. And I got to say, oh, wow. other, <laughs> you went all other in. than the button labeling being just awful, which is the standard play for any HOTUS, like no one has good button labeling because they're all fucking different. It's like button 11. Well, what is button 11? There's no 11 on my stick. Okay, button 11 is actually like ML or whatever on here. Cool. After you get past that stuff, it's damn near perfect. Um, so I, I want to call out a few thing, fallacies I've ran into with this just because I don't like everything being a love fest. I don't think that's ever balanced. Um, so I booted up in VR to start. I wasn't able to uh, play with VR. I had to actually play flat screen for the first two missions, restart the game, and then I can get in with VR. That's I know weird. Tom didn't Tom didn't have that issue. I didn't. Now my issue was a little <laughs> was I had a, a different issue, which was probably equally annoying, maybe a little less annoying. Um to play, you've got to sign up with your uh your EA account because it's multiplayer, sure, whatever. Um but in VR, it literally gives you a, a text box. I'm sitting there with like my joystick and my throttle, and it's got a, a text box inside my headset. I'm like, but I don't, I don't have a keyboard. And I'm oh, sure no. I'm not typing in a 32 character password with a touchscreen keyboard in VR. So, like, I Wonder. literally had in my goddamn headset, I had to go find my keyboard, hit tab a bunch, and then fucking copy and paste a password. Uh, that was that was stupid. You ready well, for something even more fun. frustrating with that screen? Oh no! Uh, I couldn't remember my password, so I had to do forgot password from that screen. <laughs> you can't actually <laughs> click forgot password on that screen in VR. Oh no! Yeah, I had to close the game, restart it in flat screen, click forgot password, recover my password, boot back up into VR, to sit there for ten minutes at a black screen to realize I can't play in VR yet. Yeah, so it's there's definitely some things that could have been better, but frankly, this is a very small amount of pretty trivial issues that are easily overcome. Oh yeah, the gameplay's great. The great the gameplay's just fucking fantastic. Uh, there's a lot of really fun. Uh, so they try to keep it arcadey. They didn't go systems deep. This isn't Microsoft Flight Sim. This isn't even Elite Dangerous. No. Um, it is an arcadey space game. Uh, it is that's Rogue Squadron, but modern. They gave you some cool controls. So let's say you're a uh, X-Wing. You have three controls or three options on your D-pad. You can play balanced. Or you can say, you know what? I need more power to my engines, which gives me better maneuverability. Or, and that'll drop the power to your guns and your shields. Or I need more power to my guns because I'm going pure offense. And it drops your shields and maneuverability. Or finally, hey, I want more power to my shields, and it drops your gun and maneuverability. They give you the option to adjust this, as well as you can say, I want forward-facing shields or rear-facing shields or yeah. balance. So they do give you this kind of ability, which is really fun, because it gives you strategy on if you're coming in against a really big, beastly ship that you know has a lot of guns, you can turn on full shields forward, get up to them, switch to guns last second, blast and then go to maneuverability to get the fuck out of there yep so they give and you some really cool strategies you can do with it it's that kind of like always active always thinking always trying to make the right choices when you're flying around that keeps the game from being just a i'm gonna fly forward and i'm gonna shoot and then i'm gonna go away and i'm gonna turn around and fly forward and shoot like you're actively balancing all of these systems and the power and like where your shields are during combat, like you've always got three or four things to keep an eye on and and maneuver around and strategize with, and it works really well. And um, did you get into the customization of the um, 
the ships much, like a editing your quote unquote loadout. Yeah, a small so, amount. And what surprised the fuck out of me is like I I played what two games and I unlocked a, a decent amount of stuff, like a decent amount of in-game only in-game currency. Uh, to get, like, two pretty substantial upgrades for my ship. It didn't feel grindy in the least. So, um, some of the upgrades are really fun. So, you have, like, these auto blasts, or the blasters you have normal, your lasers. You can switch to one that auto-aims for you that does less damage, but you also get these missiles, and they start letting you adjust missiles or say, you know what, I want double missiles, I'm going aggressive, or I want a build that is going to demobilize people by taking out all their systems and then it's let you go really deep where if you're playing with five people, you could really strategize on loadouts of your ships. Like mm -hmm. you can have one person that is just decked out with, I don't do damage, but I immobilize ships. And then have him going around wreaking havoc on the field and then just have heavy DPS guys come in behind and mop up all the immobilized vehicles. So it's really cool how you can kind of do some of that strategy. Yeah. Um, so Nextron's in chat calling out something that is very true. Um, there is some discrepancies between the Imperial ships and the Republic ships. Now, mainly, especially in VR, your uh, vision. Yeah. When you're an Imperial ship, uh, you don't have shit for vision. You only have forward yeah. facing. Yeah, you've got that one big ass window in front of you, and that's it. Uh, Where, like, when you're in an X wing, you can look up and track anything going above you too. So the weird the weird thing about that specific issue is is that a game balancing issue or the fact that these ships have existed forever in a movie yeah. universe and there's they have no control over the design of the cockpit. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think it'll eventually yeah, that one. I think it'll eventually um even itself out because they have better maneuverability mm -hmm. than the Empire or the Republic ships. Okay. At least it feels that as way. As long as there's me. something that to offset it. that, right? I think there is, um, but I haven't played too much rank. I've only played like three matches. So we'll see. But what is fun is you have like four different ships to choose from. You have a balanced one. You have a heavy bomber one. You have an interceptor that's high mobility for air, air anti-air. And then you have a support ship. So like there's actual classes of ships too, which is really Ooh. fun. I mean, I don't know how else to say it. They fucking knocked it out of the park with this. And it's, it's only so 40 fun. bucks. Yeah, that surprised the hell out of me. I was expecting, okay, here's a Star Wars game. It's by EA. It's a $60 purchase. Like, I'm expecting standard AAA pricing. Nuts. 40 bucks with VR support, with HOTUS support out of the box, with crossplay, without microtransactions. Like, I, I honestly don't know how this game happened. It seems so antithetical to, like, everything we've been led to believe with with recent triple a titles and it just fucking worked it it's great everyone if you're interested at all you should pick this up i i see no reason for hesitancy agreed like uh, tom it, it, is the wait for reviews guy i had a buddy just straight up tell me like this is good told tom tom looked at it for like five more seconds and then bought it <laughs> yep. So you said and you expected it to be sixty dollars, and you were pleasantly surprised that it was forty. Does it feel like a sixty dollars game, or is it yes, one yes. of those things where it's yes. a fantastic system with uh, not a lot of repeatable content? No, it it feels like a full AAA release, which is another reason why it feels like a full AAA release without any of the bullshit. Which is why it's weird that it's forty bucks. Because like I saw, like okay, I'm on Steam. Like all right, it's a sixty dollars game. Ah uh, shit! It's forty. That means it's gonna have like ungodly amounts of like DLC or microtransactions. Yeah. And nah, it's it's in-game currency that you don't have to like super grind for. You just play a casual amount, and you're unlocking basically what you want. I don't think you can pay for it. I think it's only in-game. Yeah, it's That's even better. It's just so weird to me. <laughs> I love this. It's almost I'm like so games were always supposed to be this way. So yeah. the one reason this could potentially be a $40 game rather than $60. Um, the campaign is supposedly short. Uh, the campaign is horribly written. Like the main beats are fine. They force you to talk to people. And that dialogue <laughs> is so fucking awful. Like yeah, I'm not a story not guy. Great. This has nothing to do with that. This is just bad. <laughs> it's, it's not great. 
it's, but, it's certainly not great. But the campaign, as I've been told by people who completed it, it serves the point of teaching you the system so you can play multiplayer, which is what the game's here for. Yeah. Makes sense. Um, the multiplayer only has two modes right now. Um, that could other be another reason it's only 40. I could like to see them maybe build it out, maybe get some more modes. But um, yeah, it has like just a regular dogfight mode where you're just ship to ship, five on five, first to 30 kills wins. Then they have one called, um, oh my God, I can't remember. Um, Tom, do you know what the other mode's called? Do you remember? Uh, it's like fleet something, I thought. It's a fleet battle. So what it is, each team has a capital ship and then two uh, battle cruisers with it. And you're jockeying for position to kill the other team's battle cruiser or uh, uh, capital, capital ship. ship. Yeah. So like you're going to be on the offensive. And then when you're on offense, you get an extra ship that spawns to help you attack. Soon as they uh, kill that or shortly after they kill that, you lose your attack. And then you're on defense. They're on attack. So it's back and forth to see who can take out the capital ship first. So you can die as much as you want. That doesn't hurt your team. You just got to win. Um, okay. Also, the map with nothing on it is annoying. I don't think I've played that map. Um, so next round saying there's an empty map where it's just space. Oh, um, that's weird. So I will say this about the most map design I've seen. They put a shit ton of debris on there and you have enough engine control where you can actually wait behind debris for people to pop around uh, and then ambush on the outsides. Okay. Doing that in VR is so fucking satisfying. <laughs> I was sitting behind like, like a broken ship and I was just waiting. Cause I, I had targeted somebody before and they went around and I decided to just stay there on top, like right over this ledge. So I'm just literally waiting for them to pop out. I'm watching the targeting square and it pops up. I gun the engines um, lock on, fire a bunch of missiles, blast them with lasers, and it is it is goddamn satisfying. Um, this game in VR is fantastic. This is the shit that okay. VR was built for. And this is why I might not be on the horror game tonight in VR. And that's because, <laughs> fuck, this is so fun. It's really good. You should try the horror game, though, too. Because, like, I'm not going to play the horror game all night long. I'm probably going to play three rounds and be done with it because there's only so much spookiness I can take. <laughs> My body has a limited spooky reservoir. But it's October, well, Tom. Yeah, so it's double the normal there amount. should be so maximum instead spooky. Of round, <laughs> instead of playing one round, I'll play three. Well, Nextron's here, and I remember I had said something in one of the uh, one of the channels about playing with him. So at some point, I want to get in there with him on some of that Star Wars. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I but, will be. I will be streaming. Uh, fan. I hate fan. I hate the fan fast. Phasma Phantom. Book. I'm gonna stream the plasma game fantasy tonight on this channel in VR after the podcast, uh, and I will also be streaming Star Wars with the Hoda set up. So uh, yeah, I don't know. Stick around. Phasmophobia. That's the one. Oh, that's Phantasmophobia. it. I think. I think that's all Fantastic the games, Four. Isn't it, fellas? Fantastic Voyage. Uh, yes. Yeah. Slide, I think slide, that's, that's slippity slide. Should we slide, slide, slippity slide into the news? No. Tom or Adam, I fucking hate you for also going with that <laughs> reference. Such a good one. Um, okay. So let's get to the news that I can't see because I was not professional oh, and didn't no. scroll down. Oh, okay, God. got it. More. Oh, yeah. We started with corporate Wait, dick man. wagging. Yeah. Waving. All right. Waving. How uh, a, a judge has said that uh, Epic's decision to bypass Apple's App Store policies were dishonest and that this is a problem of Epic's own making. So go fuck yourselves. <laughs> uh, a different judge said, yeah, this should probably be a jury trial because this is super complicated and we're going to want the people to decide this. And Apple and Epic both said, no, we're not going to do that. We'll escalate this court trial, but if it has to go to a jury, we're just going to settle because we don't want case law. Like, Epic doesn't want case law saying, hey, if you break contracts, you get in trouble, and that's legal. And Apple doesn't, <laughs> want, case law. <laughs> Apple doesn't want case law saying, hey, if somebody doesn't want to pay you $30 don't break my knees protection money, they shouldn't have to. 
So both companies have a vested interest in fucking over the American public. Can I point out one thing we haven't addressed about that whole thing and why Epic really doesn't want it? Because if they set a precedent against Apple, it actually comes back to bite them in the ass because they also are a platform. Yup. They have their own gaming platform where they take 15% cut. Yeah, so Epic wants their cake, wants to eat it too, and doesn't want to put up with any of the consequences of eating said cake. And Apple wants to continue to threaten to break people's knees unless they get the 30%. So corporate dick waving. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Um, and I'm just going week. to, I'm just going to go ahead and skip the first three news items because it all sums into that. Marvel yep. Avengers has a lower player concurrent count on Steam than oh I filled in the blank here. Then, then Deus Ex, um, Mankind Divided. Mankind Divided, yeah, which came out forever ago and is a single player game, and this uh, multiplayer centric live game as a service thing as apparently fucking floundering and square's not happy isn't that not only Dude. isn't that not only a um deus ex rather is that not only a not new game but it also wasn't received particularly well at the time of release no, was it, it? <laughs> i actually fucking hated it i started the game and quit i love deus ex as a series like if there's any series that has me written all over it it's a you know, thinking man's immersive sim, deus ex, conspiracy theory, technological, cyberpunk, future dystopia. Mm -hmm. and it's a game I Tom stopped. wrote. Yeah, I stopped playing it because it was bad. Oh, no. Yeah. Also, but let's I, be I'm honest. I'm not going to get into a theming discussion on it because it's it gets stupid. No game stands a chance coming out as an MMO at this point. That is such a saturated market. You have to yeah. nail it to stand a chance. Yeah. Like, why Why do you put out these goddamn lifestyle games? You can't have a hundred lifestyle games. We don't have that many lifestyles, guys. I mean, because you have like, wow. And as soon as they have a patch and they have a big DLC coming out, good luck. You are not getting anywhere around that because they are going to yeah. suck 90% of your MMO player base into that one game. Exactly. The other 10 are split between like fucking RuneScape and ES EOS. <laughs> so, uh, um, RuneScape. Uh, what I've heard w from reviews about this game is that it's a perfectly normal, super average brawler, right? Like, there's nothing technically wrong with it aside from being just kind of there. Um, but it's hampered by this constant, like, a push for you got to buy this stuff or pay this money or upgrade these things with real world cash that it actually ruins the working parts of the game. That's a shame. The only Marvel game I play is Legos. Because yeah, that's those just are pretty right. fucking good. They're great. All right. I remember there being like an X Men game that was pretty good on like the PS2. The arcade two. game. Well, that one too, but there was another one. I can't remember what it was. It was like a. Overhead third person action beat em up oh, kind of yeah, game. Yeah, it was the, the RPG, uh, Marvel Alliance. I think so. Was it for PS2? Oh, Ultimate Alliance. Those yeah. are those are fucking good. Yeah, those, those are good. Get great reviews, but um, yeah, one and two were critically acclaimed. Well, the third one was Switch exclusive, wasn't it? I think so. I I looked at it and then didn't buy it when I saw the Metacritic scores in the like low seventies. I was like, yeah, I don't really need to pay sixty bucks for this. Maybe one day. Guys, what's your favorite X-Men? Oh, I think Gambit. Gambit. Yeah. Gamb oh, Gambit is so cool. Gambit's a, just... I was always a toss-up between Gambit and Nightcrawler. Those were my two. Nightcrawler's pretty rad. I like Beast probably as my number two. Yeah. Beast or Cyclops. That's pretty rad. But yeah, that's also kind of weird. We all went with Gambit. The character that Gambit never is made just it to cool. the OG movie. He's so cool. Yeah. <laughs> like, I Who doesn't so want to throw exploding cards at people and beat him with a stick? I control kinetic energy. Dude, that is badass. <laughs> I mean, like, kinetic energy is everything. Well, not everything. It's half of everything because the other half's potential. But still. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, on to it. After um, promising no crunch this time last year, CD, CD Project Red 
has come out and said, yeah, there's going to be crunch for Cyberpunk. There are Mandatory crunch. Six days Mandatory. a week. Forcing yeah. six days a week. Mandatory crunch. So yeah, people so, people aren't super happy about this. They are trying to to make good. Like crunch is a massive problem in a lot of industries. In the game industry, it gets a whole lot of attention. Um, like uh, Rockstar during the development of Red Dead Redemption Two came under massive fire for the amount of crunch they were putting employees through, which you know sometimes is paid and sometimes is not because hey, your salary, you have to work here. But if you don't work these eighty hours, we'll just find somebody to replace you. Um, so like there's, CD, there's shit like that. CD Projekt Red though actually has a really nice structure for employees for that mm. because um, CD Projekt Red ten percent of profits get split between all employees. So ten percent of the company's total profits are split for employees, which is pretty nice. Yeah, they're they're trying. It's it's going to be interesting to see like if this does smooth things over. I know the employees weren't thrilled with this news at all especially after being promised hey yeah even though we're building this big game you're still going to be able to have a life outside of work and it turns into nah take a day to sleep but the rest is ours i know i, I we we just fundamentally don't see eye to eye on it sucks i'll never say it doesn't uh-huh. but i mean I it exists like, if, in a if lot of other places game, like there, i don't four times i don't think Why it existing in other places it? justifies it as something that's acceptable yeah i mean like yeah i don't know but i'm also one of those people that doesn't like to work a lot <laughs> i wish people had more free time in general that, that yeah. wanted the time rather i know some people are all about and they get most of their satisfaction from their job and that's that's totally cool when people can go all in on something like that but not everybody wants to do that and I yeah. I take I take umbrage with the the mandatory part of this, right? Like if it if it were a hey, we need to crunch to finish this stuff, sign up for extra hours, make overtime pay, that's way more equitable to me than hey, you're getting salary, so uh sixty plus hours or fuck off. Like that's all right, that's not Look, really a choice. The salary bit does suck. I mean, th- yeah. that, that part is where mm-hmm. it does kind of stop. I mean, I've, I've literally lived that. I have worked for companies where they said, hey, because we've got this thing, it's it's all hands on deck, 12-hour days at least. By the way, we can't pay you more because your salary. Even though that's not really the way labor laws are written. You could, with say, a aren't good there, and Aren't there plenty of jobs out. with that are salary that you still get yep. overtime there for? Are. Yeah. There are but it takes a, a good employment lawyer to get you that because most yeah. companies are just not going to. Well, and it also matters too. Like we don't know the culture of CD Projekt Red. This could be the type of company where, yeah, you're f- we need you to do this, but they give you comp time later or something like that. Yeah. Hopefully they do, at least. Yeah. I mean, and minimum, at least they're getting 10% of all profits. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, with the game like this coming out, that's probably going to be a pretty, pretty, pretty uh, bonus. Yeah, yeah, this is a hugely hyped game. But anyway, and hey, maybe maybe um, this is really just in service of the brand, right? Like because Cyberpunk is literally it's a game about existing in the cyberpunk capitalist dystopia. Maybe they're just leaning into it being like, "Hey guys, look, we need to make this game as accurate as possible." So, mandatory <laughs> overtime, you're not getting any extra money for it. Uh we've chained up your family in uh, the break room so you can see them. And Jim, we're replacing your arms with robot arms. All right, that's what that is. <laughs> um, now that we've gone off the rails again. Yes. Um, okay, this one, fuck it, whatever. Minecraft has characters coming in to uh, Super Smash Brothers. Once yep, again, that, Nintendo of, is playing well with Microsoft. Yeah, <laughs> of all the things, though, that's the fighting I game character. It. <laughs> it's funny, it. but like... I don't Man, know. give me fucking Master Chief in there. No, no, I'm I am way more okay. People are mad about this because Nintendo is playing into nostalgia, but not their personal nostalgia, right? Like yeah. Minecraft is huge. Yeah. People have got massive nostalgia over it, but hey, because it isn't like a classic character from an NES game that only came out in Japan in 1975, then you can fuck off, Nintendo. No, that's not how it works, guys. I couldn't even tell you all the different characters they've added. Like I've, I haven't played Smash in probably 
shit, it's been a while. I play it like once a month. Wasn't I Solid haven't. Snake in one of those games? He still yep. is. He was introduced in uh, Brawl. So they keep... Hold on. No, 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 no. The Wii, the Wii. Was that Brawl or Melee? That was Brawl, yeah. Brawl. Meaning he still is, as in the most recent yes. Smash Brothers game, you can yep. still play him? Do they do that with yep. all the characters? No. Smash Ultimate is uh, kind of interesting, and this is the biggest selling point for Smash Ultimate, where they said, everyone is here. Literally... Every single person who has ever ever been in a Smash game ever is in this one. Full roster. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Super yeah, and hard it's good. to pull off. Like, how do you even begin to have those licensing conversations? Yeah. But they and, did it. And don't take me wrong for me saying I haven't played in a while. It's a very good game. Yeah. Um, it's uh, now if you're a nitty gritty high and fighting pro yeah you're not gonna like it there's some issues yeah. with latency but for your everyday schmo it's a really good brawl or a really good melee so i'm i'm not going to be able to avoid this um there is a shitty joke made on twitter about minecraft steve getting added to uh smash brothers and they said well they had to do it because smash pros love miners okay all right, so you can follow Whoa. us on Twitter yeah, at 72PC <laughs> underscore official. Uh, we post YouTube content every week. Nope, Tom. Thank you all for no. joining. <laughs> timeout. Go to fucking timeout. I thought it was a very uh, timely joke. Boo. Anyway, uh, we're not oh going to touch that. If you have any idea, <laughs> oh look into God. this news. You know what? We're not touching it. You know what? I'm just going to turn him off for a second. Okay. Yep. Uh, right, I'll go, go ahead and right. I'll get into um, our next news, which is Nintendo's reportedly saying that the Joy-Con drift isn't a really isn't really a problem and hasn't really hurt anyone. Nintendo tends to be super customer centric, and this is a double barrel middle finger to anyone who's had this issue. Yeah. Have they not and been replacing people's switches for that? They have. They have been replacing it for so, free. I have gotten two replaced already. So. Soon to be They've replaced switches because of a specific issue and then said that that issue never happened. Well, that is not a real big issue. It's not, yeah. oh, not a real big issue and hasn't hurt anyone. Yeah. Meaning, yes. meaning we're replacing them. So what does it matter? They're trying to or, avoid a class action lawsuit and the opposition lawyer, really the, the people who are pu publishing the story are trying to enact a class action lawsuit against Nintendo for this issue. I, I honestly don't know how I feel about this. Like, on one hand, yeah, it's a big fucking issue. On the other hand, they're replacing it all for free. Like, Yeah, I, but they they never fixed the issue. Like, they, they let it go for so long. Yeah, they did let it go for a while. See, I that's why I don't know how I feel about this. Like, it's... Eh, yeah. Yeah. Like, once it was yeah. discovered, if they would have said, you know what, we're pulling all Joy-Cons from shelves... We're going to get this fixed. But so at the time when this issue was discovered, they didn't have the stock to pull Joy Cons. Like, exactly. Either, it was already yeah. there. Just fix it. <laughs> there is there no way they have can pull them without literally buy. not selling any more switches, which they're not going to do. And people would get mad about that, right? Like, they how many people are trying to get people. fucking the Animal Crossing switch right now and can't? But they weren't selling them because Nintendo doesn't know how to fucking keep stock up. No, no. They know how to keep stock. They also know how to generate demand. Apparently, NVIDIA uh, does too. Yeah. No shit. <laughs> anyway. NVIDIA, um, NVIDIA pulled out of every single, yeah, every single 3080. All seven of them have been sold. <laughs> Fuck you, NVIDIA. Speaking Come of which, on, didn't, uh, didn't the... Real the next stock of those get delayed for to like the end of the month yep. or something. Yep. And actually I'm saying fuck you NVIDIA, but it's not really NVIDIA. No, yeah, it's not. that's true. Fuck yeah. you it's shitty. like MSI and EVAG and yeah. Evega and, and all, all the fucking botters who are goddamn selling them all. Yeah. On. I didn't know that uh, was a thing. I don't blame, I don't blame the botters mainly because the botters only get this to work because they're not making enough of them. You know that your price point is so low 
that people want it and that your return on that price point is better than it's ever been for a graphics card. So, while, you while know the demand's going to be through the roof. I'm going to agree with you that, yes, the botters are not the root cause. The root cause is the lack of supply increasing the demand. But they're certainly not making the question or the, the problem any easier. Also, you can't say that they're not fucking assholes. Oh, no, they are. They're, they're complete assholes. Douchebag okay. move. Okay, good. <laughs> Doesn't mean they're the one causing the actual problem. Yeah. They're just making the problem worse. Yes. 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 They didn't start the fire, but they'll bring a can of gas over and give a little, <laughs> give a little pour. It was already burning. It was already Since burning. Since the world's been turning? No. God damn it. No. I actually really, really hate that song a lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, glad. I'm glad we made the reference. <laughs> also, I want to call out for uh, visual lear or learners. Jeezy Pete's Eric. Visual Top learners. Time. Visual uh, listeners. Or visual viewers. listeners. Oh, fuck me! <laughs> all the How time. many visual listeners do you have on Twitch right now? Oh yeah, we're up to like <laughs> three hundred. Five. I'm struggling here, fellas. I need drug across this finish line. I'm just trying to say we got Josh and Smig in here. So Josh, hey. formerly of on the cast, our head coach, badass dude, and Smig. Um. Anyway, news. News. Um, <laughs> Uh, Farmville. Hit us with that new new. Farm Farmville is dead dead. Dead dead. Dead dead. dead, dead. I'll be honest with you. I completely forgot that Farmville was ever a thing. <laughs> right? I didn't I know. Comple it was I completely forgot about it. Like yeah. Like I I for I didn't know that it was still going, but I also just it completely <laughs> removed itself from my memory. Like, oh yeah, Farmville, that was a huge thing on Facebook back in the Oh, is it the same time as that mafia game on Facebook? Yeah. I don't I don't remember that one. Mafia too much. Wars. Uh oh. Yeah. It was all about like yeah. buying things to make more money to buy more things to make more money. Did either of yeah. you guys play any of those games? Yeah. Um, yeah. I played Mafia Wars like once and then Farmville once, and then I gave up because it was bullshit. <laughs> it was watch numbers grow. That's all it is. Yeah. It's like an ARPG without the action. You're just watching those fucking numbers grow for no fucking reason. But yeah, it was. I thought you I liked watching it. numbers grow, Eric. I thought that was. I do. Only when it's tied to a stock price. <laughs> 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 um. So, yeah, yeah that game's dead. <laughs> I didn't know it was still alive, so I'm not sad. Yeah, they're they're officially <laughs> shutting down Farmville. The end of an era. Interesting. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, so now we got some fun news. Uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare. This week they started their sixth season. Also, six seasons already. The game hasn't been out a year. Fast seasons. Well, anyway, with the start of this season, they introduced a new uh, anti-cheat and detected and banned 20,000 cheaters day one. Jesus fucking Christ. 20,000. 20, That's a lot. How big is the <laughs> player base of this game? I was going to say, what is their average concurrent players? And also, that means like almost every match had to have someone cheating, right? I was, I was about a, to say, this, like, 20,000 people decided to be fucking degenerates like there's no other way to put that like if you are cheating in an online game go fuck yourself don't even play right like twenty thousand goddamn de degenerates playing or cheating at call of duty come on yeah. motherfuckers come on so yeah twenty thousand band awesome um, we got some Game Pass news. Uh, we've already hit on the fact that was coming, but on November 10th, EA Play is being added to Game Pass. Yee. I'm excited That's for gonna that. That's going to be kind of cool. Hey, wait. Um, is Squadron going to be added to I was about to ask. Cool. That would be kind of cool if they just tossed Squadrons on there. Like, what up? <laughs> we're even less of a bad guy than you thought we were. Yeah. EA does not throw brand new titles on play, okay. but okay, they will pay... They, they don't have to be like super old though. Yeah. I could see in about six months squadrons being on there. That's okay. I don't I don't mind paying 40 bucks, but like if I'm already paying and it comes out tomorrow, I'm gonna be kind of kind of mad. 
and you've already put in your two hours. So actually, yeah. okay. Sidebar. Has anyone tried to refund an EA game on Steam? No. Like, does the same pot principle apply? I'm pretty sure because mm. it's a it's a Steam platform thing. It's not a publisher thing. Unless the publisher disables refunds on certain items. Like, uh, for instance, Rocket League credits. You cannot refund purchases of virtual currency on Steam, which makes perfect fucking sense. Um, yeah. But, I didn't uh, think the currency yeah. I, it, what, the currency wasn't what I thought it was. It doesn't run right. <laughs> <laughs> um, wait, I, know, wait, I bought not, these items, but now there's a cooler looking one, and I want a refund. It's not EA, but I know our buddy Dilaz refunded Rainbow Six Siege, which is a Ubisoft launch. I game also refunded Rainbow Six Siege. Oh, did you? Yeah, and then I, I bought it again. Oh, yeah, because <laughs> I fucking hated it when I first played it, and then I gave another shot when you guys got into it again and i kept yeah, it it's not the same game it was at launch no I, I think it would be fun to get into it again again i'm okay yeah. with that it's a good game uh they have okay it's not in our news but they i have saw sam it fisher's in, in it now they have sam fisher and they have a golden gun mode right now oh really for uh, any of you um 007 guys those golden gun it's one hit one kill Nice. So um, I don't know exactly like if it's pistols only or what, but that's kind of fun. I, yeah. I will say, though, Sam Fisher being in the game is actually a negative to me because that means that Ubisoft is just doing this to appease the people who want another Splinter Cell game. And it's just not going to happen. Uh, that'd be kind of cool, cool, though. I would love a modern Splinter Cell game. Yeah, I would like a modern Splinter Cell in the vein of the OG Splinter Cell. Yes, like agree. Heavy, like none of this heavy none, stuff. None of this shitty like knockoff Metal Gear Solid. Give me the if I get seen, it's over. Splinter Cell of old. I didn't know they changed the gameplay formula. Uh, yeah, it it became more a action. Standard, more action. Oh. standard action stealth, like every single other fucking AAA release. Oh my god, Sam's hiding in the tall grass from the robot dinosaurs. I mean <laughs> clickers. <laughs> So OG Splinter Cell did have some action points, but it was highly, highly stealth. Yeah. yeah. And what if, if you that, got uh, caught in the OG the, Splinter Cell, you couldn't, you couldn't recover. I wonder if OG Splinter Cell holds up. When's the last time you guys played one? It's been a while. For a long ass while. The last Splinter Cell game I played was on the Game Boy Advance. Um, I think I play, I can't remember what it was, like the tag teamy one. All right. Anyway, yeah. enough of all that. Enough of fall. Um, obviously, Fall Guys news next. Fall Guys. Uh, we have a date. Season two comes November 10th. Or Wow, wow, Eric. Way to read the wrong date. October 8th. <laughs> October 8th is going to be season two. Um, yep, so this is huge week. Because um, their player count dropped a lot. I mean, I'm not going to say I told you so. I, yeah. But I told you so. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Not that I don't think it's a good game. I haven't played it, but I mean, obviously, a, a lot of people liked it a lot for there for a little while. So, it's a fun game. But um, it's in, I didn't. I think it didn't seem. Game. It didn't seem like something that would have a lot of staying power. Yeah, season two is going to bring people back. Yeah, and after a couple weeks, people, you know, put it back until the next update. So what? What all did they do with the seasons? Like, what make? What do they change each season? Um, they're they adding new levels. Added. So this, they're, I hope they continue this. This is a medieval theme season. So oh. the levels are trying to portray a medieval theme. Like they have a castle one where you're trying to get over the walls. You have to move things in a way to get over. So like they, if they keep this kind of thing going like that, it could be really fun to see some, like maybe there's an outer space one and stuff like that. And after that, I don't know. But it'd just be really fun to see them keep with the themed levels, but also difficult. But either way, October 8th, new fall, guys. Yay. Yay. And then there's no actual date on this. Steam says December 31st, but I think that's just a placeholder date. There's another DLC for a game that wasn't supposed to have more DLC, and I can't be more excited. <laughs> the Binding, Binding of, of Isaac. Isaac. They're new. pulling a Terraria, aren't they? <laughs> yes, they yeah. are. This is, what, the third final DLC update? Yeah, the last one was player create or fan created content. 
This one is proper um, McMahon, McMahon, McMillan, McMillan, uh, McMillan, Mac, Mac McMillan. So his statement to this is that re- this DLC is called Repentance. Rebirth to Repentance is a bigger jump than OG Isaac to Rebirth. Jesus. Keep in mind, Rebirth was the remake of Isaac, which was a Flash game and added over 100 new items to the game. This is a bigger improvement. I'm going to call it right now. Binding of Isaac, this DLC adds VR support. Uh, (laughs) No way. No. (laughs) No, not even close. But But that said... This is going to be really, really fun to play back into. When I was doing quick hits, I booted up for um, for some B-roll. Oh, did and you? I, find, I found myself playing like two or three extra runs yeah. after I was done with my B-roll. I have, I have, that's one of those games that I, I love and I have a lot of nostalgia for because of that, that period of time we got super into it. Oh, yeah. About um, 2014, 2015. Yeah. So I'm I'm we really playing. looking forward to this. I know they the reason the the date is December 31st is because they don't have a release a release date yet. But Edmund has said that it'll be, you know, before the end of the year at some point. And uh he said by mid October that we will be expecting regular updates from him, which is really rad. Ooh. Yeah. This is the year for the fucking roguelikes, man. Rogue <laughs> Legacy comes in to um early access. You got Splunk hey, 2. Yeah. Yeah. I need to pick up Splunky 2. I fucking love the original. I don't, I don't think Splunky 2 is out yet. It is. It is? I, I, yeah, I thought I it was you can buy it today. I thought it was okay. Well then it's out yet. Um, but yeah, like there that right there is like three like staple roguelike roguelites. Like that everyone knows. Yeah. So this is pretty fucking rad. And then, like you said, Hades new kid on the block. Um, of risk of rain here. had is, I guess risk of oh, rain. Oh yeah, is risk. Yeah, risk it of is, rain two yeah. got released, like full yeah. released. So yeah, I mean this this is fucking awesome. Like I love my roguelikes. I love being able to pick up a game and yeah. like ah thirty minutes later I'm done. Yeah, but it's kind of weird. Be- it. <laughs> it's kind of weird because the the whole roguelike fad heyday. I don't want to say fad because it. But I mean, like that period of time where they were super huge and every new indie game had roguelike elements and stuff. Mm-hmm. It's cool. Like it's it's like a resurgence. All of a sudden, yes. all these sequels are coming out and updates and and DLCs. And, and then you want and then new games like they, Hades. Yeah, and then the Hades team. and it's cool. So, uh, Adam, do you think you'd be interested in Hades just out of curiosity? Uh, I, mean, I don't know. Cool to buy everyone Hades. Oh. <laughs> I'm not sure. I okay. I'm not sure if I would play it much at the moment. I'm gonna get to it at some point. I just don't know when that some point is because yeah. there's VR games that are actually really good right now. Yeah, and you saw to play playing. Alex. Oh, yeah, I saw yeah. to play Alex. I saw to finish Last of Us, man. Jesus, you need to finish that so that I can hate myself trying to talk to you about the <laughs> story. <laughs> <laughs> My biggest issue is that they brought in all the Game of Thrones characters, but then didn't do anything with them. Yeah. Like, why even have the crossover? Exactly. Uh, anyway, um, I think that's all we got for you guys this week. So with that, I think we um, do a little rundown. So for yeah. those of you watching us live, thank you very much. But if you missed anything and want to go back and watch an entire podcast, or maybe just, you know, the clips of the really good shit, We got those over on our YouTube, which is uh, 72 Pin Connector on YouTube. Also have quick hits and have a monthly montage of some of the community's top plays, which will be next week, by the way. Um, If you're watching us on YouTube, thank you. That's fucking awesome. Or if you're listening to us on podcasts, that's awesome. But we do this live every Saturday night, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific time on our Twitch, twitch.tv slash 72 Pin Connector. So you can jump in, be part of the conversation, snipe our games like what these two guys are doing right now, and just come and chill and hang out. It's a good time. Also, we have a Twitter. We keep everything up to date with like our Rocket League team, which um, just got eliminated from the Swiss round this uh, week. Sad. They did really great, though. Fucking made it Swiss round. But 
All the updates go into the Twitter, which is 72PC underscore official. And then finally, that was a whole lot of shit thrown at you. You can go to 72pinconnector.com and that'll link you everywhere you need. And soon, it'll look even better than ever. Soon.tm. Soon.tm. Or not dot .tm, soon tm. Dot tm. Soon dot tm forward slash org slash and, yeah. dot com dot pdf dot, dot, dot pdf dot exe dot tif anyway um i think that's all i got do you guys got anything you want to get out of here with before um uh, hmm. i'm mad at ea because they circumvented my expectations and put out a good game that i really like with nice support god now you're gonna have to enjoy something you just yeah, have to enjoy right? the oh, game crap. what are you gonna complain how about? are you ever gonna handle liking an ea game I'm I'm just going to fucking play it. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to play it. I'm going to enjoy it. And I'm going to tell people that they should buy it. So fuck <laughs> you, EA. <laughs> and with that, ladies and gentlemen, I think that's all we got for you this week. Oh, my so, God. That's it. Till next week. Game on. See everybody. <laughs>